1999, Snoop releases his sophomore No Limit LP, Top Dog. Oh my God, we only popping now. I was like, ooh, I wanted to get on it, but damn, it wasn't my album, it wasn't my song. Bitch, I'm down with No Limit, I ride for the cause. I'm the nigga on the tank with the big fucking balls. And if anybody fuck with Snoop Doggy Dog, I'ma make his niggas put his name on the wall. We still tripping with Death Row, so see murder like fuck that. Just spoke with Suge Knight recently who said he used to be a superstar and now he's just a No Limit soldier. What do you say to that? Nothing. He used to be a CEO, now he's just an inmate. That probably what made C Murder have that vengeance in his heart. To say it without saying no names, but just to let a nigga know, fuck them other niggas, I'm down with this nigga right here. When I make moves, I got a hundred niggas with me. Just in case a nigga out there trying to get me. All my niggas is down to squeeze the trigger, that's why I'm down for my motherfucking niggas. You got a problem with Snoop Dogg, you got a problem with me. And niggas wanna act like they wanna get with Snoop Dogg? Let me let you niggas know. Shit, fuck what you going through and fuck what you stand for. Actually, I had no story behind that song. I could never say nothing about it. Cause it had no relevance. Until now. So in 1998, Master P did a I Got the Hookup comedy jam at the Universal Amphitheater in Universal City, California. I'm a big fan of Master P, and I'm just looking forward. I'm, he's just constantly breaking history and making um, leeway through black music and music worldwide. The show was sold out. Everything was going wonderful. In between the comedy show, we went on and performed a song. We went on stage, and uh, Dog got left. He was in the green room. So, this is what happened. But we sitting on the inside. Death Row guys walk up. So we chopped it up. Five minutes later, it's about seven of them around me. I ain't paying attention. So the soldiers then went on stage. Now I'm back here talking to these Death Row niggas by myself. We end up yapping and yapping and yapping. They talking behind my ear. So I'm like, let me holler at you. So now they were like, you owe Suge apology. And I'm like, fuck Suge, nigga. Nigga like, what? Maybe Snoop was talking crazy to them and they caught him slipping. I got the hookup comedy jam in LA. This shit got real. Towards the end of the show, there was a grand finale where they brought all the No Limit soldiers up on stage. Yes, so the soldiers then went on stage. Now I'm back here talking to these Death Row niggas by myself. The nigga tried to take off on me. Whoa, he missed. I get out of there. Well, I'm up on the side stage, and Snoop just comes flying by him. Master P and them get the word while they on stage. I could see somebody, you know, and they're telling everybody to come. They literally ran off the stage in the middle of the performance. And boo 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 and everybody was like running out of the gate, so we pow, run after them. The DJ's got the record spinning. There's gunshots <laughs> on the song, but the audience doesn't know that. So now a riot is happening. You know, you see the red shirts coming, you know, like. Shit, all you see the fuck, all you see that camera flies too. I get a whiz, eh? No cuts, no scars, no hits, no nothing. But I run right into the law. The weed in my pocket and everything, because I'm trying to save my life. They handcuffed me. He put me in the back of the police car. As soon as we come out the door, we got officers drawing punks in our faces and helicopter, blugger, 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 blugger. Get on the ground. They didn't know where Snoop was. So they're screaming. Where the fuck is Snoop? Snoop, all right. The 20 cops aiming shotguns at them. They're screaming back, you all need to get on your knees. Everybody on your knees. And they're like, we ain't getting on our fucking knees. It's a standoff. I know Lemon soldiers was ready. I was in the back of the police car like this. I seen about nine niggas walk out like this. Master P and them was going crazy. What's happening? What's up? What? Because they, they just heard that the niggas just jumped Snoop. They didn't jump me. They didn't get none. Been doing this shit for years, nigga. They take me and my cousin dad to jail. And when we get in there, Ray J's in there. So we spend four hours in jail with Ray J. I ain't making this shit up, man. I'm not making this shit up. No limit.
Limit did prove to Snoop that we had his back. He's not with Death Row no more. He's with No Limit. Nobody's messing with Snoop. That's it. Master P, he had a plan for us. He ran down what he thought that should happen as far as music, albums, movies. In 1999, we want to expand our brand, so we did it. action movies, and we were able to sell that in about 30 different territories. We on fire! If we that hot, we should be the motherfucking hot boy. The opportunity to be a part of Hot Boys, that was fun. Silver Screen, that's, that's a whole nother set of checks right there. Hot Boys, nigga. And what's the point? No Limit Films is in the 50 to $75 million range from a revenue standpoint. We then started to get the calls from the studios and the big producers. People like Joe Silver and Peter Goober, who was head of Mandalay. And that's how Master P got a $10 million five picture deal with Trimark. Nobody in hip hop was doing that. Nobody. We expanded, and uh, y'all just might see me on Scream 3, too. Master P was putting less emphasis on the music side. He was putting his energy into new opportunities that made sense. We got a shopping center, we got a real estate business, we got a sports business, we got a film, music. You just never know, because it ain't no limit. I'd look at P sometimes and go, this is bloody fucking nuts. But that was P. I'd like to bring out my man, Master P. In addition to the films, Master P came into a deal with the WCW. In 1999, the No Limit Soldiers debut on WCW, and they face off against the West Texas Rednecks. No Limit Soldiers! Check it out! Somebody say and I said, man, you know, sometimes you got to think outside of the box. That's the bodyguard of Master P that just jumped the safety rail. He was the first to put hip hop into pro wrestling with the WCW. I probably had one of the biggest contracts. I signed on to do two matches. They paid me $2 million. Master P's involved, Master P! All of the No Limit soldiers! That was his short-lived wrestling career. Julio! Julio! So I left the WCW to go do other business ventures, but the No Limit soldiers stayed there through the rest of the year. I don't know what his goal was at that point. We would just follow and try to keep up. Even when we were working on albums, he always talked about still going back into the NBA. How are you gonna end up balancing everything else that you do along with basketball? I got great people that work for me, and it's time for them to do that. I wanna play basketball, that's my dream. I'm chasing it. So I'm on my way to Toronto. Throwing up the three again, and he got it! Penetrating inside, he's on fire! Miller. Vince Carter, Tracy McGrady, Charles Oakley. All those guys knew that I could play. Now Master P. Got it! Every rapper fantasized about being in the NBA. Master P did it. But God clearly had a different plan. I had a $3 million one-year deal on the table. And the next day, they decided to go a different direction because Vince Carter, agent, tank had gotten in trouble. It was like a big scandal. I don't think the Toronto Raptors wanted to let me go. They had to let me go because it was too much tension. That was it. I mean, I was the last cup. It was disappointing, but I knew the politics. You know, we all have dreams. What suffered was the breadwinner, No Limit Records. That ball shit is cool. Don't let it take away from what's making this real money. We got too comfortable with being at the top. Master P was working on everything but music, uh, which he seemed to be fine with. At the same time, Cash Money was hot on the scene. It's time to make a change. I'm coming for y'all. Cash Money records taking over for the 99 in the 2000. Girl, you're working with how's it feel to be front and center on the hottest indie label in the country right now? Stars calling me won't do the nasty, but it's all great, you know what I'm saying? You got cash money following the blueprint. 
that Master P laid out. They were kind of grinding in a parallel state with No Limit, but they were here all the time, obviously, and P was kind of away doing his thing, so. But you can see that they were becoming forced to be reckoned with for real. I'm very excited, like, this is our big break. I had people talking to me, and they said, Cash Money's looking for a distribution deal, and I was prepared to do it. But P was really, really serious about not letting us sign Cash Money. And he said, yeah, if you sign those guys, there's going to be big problems. You ready to punch somebody in, huh? You ain't scared, huh? You know how to play it, huh? They been slim. A lot of their people was from the Magnolia, and we was from the Cali, yo. It was a wall going on at that time. I stayed strapped. I mean, I'm strapped right now. With those two neighborhoods beefing, anything could happen. If they want to bring it to me, take it how you want to bring it how you feel. I feel like I saved their lives. Baby knew. Cash Money ended up signing with Universal. It was the way it was supposed to happen. These guys went and built something that was supposed to be a part of Southern Hip Hop too. And my whole thing with No Limit was, man, keep grinding. Master P knew in his mind where he personally wanted No Limit to go, but there was clashing of egos. Beats by the Pound got into a little beef with P. They felt they were worth more. Percy was also very busy. So a lot of times, we had people passing messages from P to them, from them to P. You know, in the middle is always a little funny. There was this meeting that they had with Master P over the phone, and they expressed themselves. Something got miscommunicated, then it got personal. It never became personal. Beats by the Pound wanted to be their own boss. When they left having that meeting, I was at the house. So they all came in there like, what the fuck, right? And I don't think that they got the answer that they was looking for. I didn't have to create a Beats by the Pound. I could have paid for whatever the top production there was at the time. I believed in these guys. When you give opportunity to somebody that's ungrateful, that's really sad, because they wouldn't have that opportunity without me. Go handle your business. They did. Did it work out? 1999, Beats by the Pound leaves the label. When he lost Beats by the Pound, man, that was important. That was his weapon, for real. The artists, we were great. We, we were very important. They were the heartbeat. When I got the news, oh, at a pound, um, they leave, and I was like, oh, fuck, I don't know what I'm gonna do now. You know, P brought new producers who were good producers, but we were so family. It was like, yeah, they cool, but I don't wanna work with them, man. What's up with these by the pound? But after we split, these by the pound was still working with all the rest of the artists that was with No Limit. But I don't recall anybody having any big records after that. It was no longer the happy family that it once was. Shit got weird. Imagine going to your house one day and all your paintings are off the wall. It's a house, but the personality about it, what accumulated over time, is gone. That's what it felt like. 99 was a time to get rid of all the bullshit from around me. When the smoke clear, I'm gonna be good. Fire in the hole, fire in the hole, stand by, and action. After Master P lost Beast by the Pound, a lot of people were critical of him. So he came out of retirement to drop Only God Can Judge Me. Only God Can Judge Me is personally my favorite album. I'm not in it trying to be the biggest star in the world. It wasn't about I needed to rap. I think that the message 
needed to be hurt. The only God could judge me. But only God could judge me, cause I'm down to do whatever. Where do we go from here? You know, can't no man put no barriers on my life. We getting ready for a new start. And the people that's not gonna be around, go on about your business.